Welcome back. We talked about two classes of methods that uh, explain why a model made a certain prediction. The first one did so by uh, giving an explanation in plain English language, immediately coming to the gist of why um, the why why the prediction was made. The second class of models was looking into inputs and finding which tokens or pixels are responsible for the prediction. And now we are going to kind of build up on that attribution approach, but now we are interested in the features that are not just sole tokens or sole pixels in isolation. We are interested in the kind of pairwise um, interactions between features such as this word and this word together uh, are important for the prediction or something even more high level, something that we can't really define through the relationships in the inputs, uh, some kind of concepts such as the one I keep mentioning of stripeness for predicting whether a picture represents zebra or not. And if we talk about pairwise feature importances, then immediately to your mind, uh, might come uh, at self-attention. We have seen these kinds of heat maps where before I have told you, well, the um, value in an attention metric represents uh, importance of one word for the other. And that importance might be suggestive of some kind of known uh, pairwise uh, feature um, in, let's say, linguistics, such as subject, object, uh, or subject, object, word relation, uh, or something else. Okay, uh, here I also put the um, more, or not more, but original form of uh, attention that was introduced in this paper. This is where attention comes from. And um, before self-attention became a thing, you could have used attention mechanism to also do the attribution of inputs. You can still do it with self-attention, but it's less uh, interesting given that we have gradient-based uh, attribution. And what I'm going to talk about uh, today is not how to do attribution with attention mechanism, but rather I want to talk about these attention matrices that gives us relationship between uh, words. All right. So um, uh, before we move forward, I want to go back to this uh, this uh, equation that gives us, gave us this uh, matrix. And I want to go over a few details that will be important for the uh, today's uh, lecture. Um, and for that, I will need my screen. Let me see, can I uh, remove? OK, great, I can. OK, so let me give you a, an uh, example, such as um, cat eats food. OK, great. With a self-attention mechanism, we had a couple of uh, matrices. We had we, query, key, and value, if we remember. And uh, all of those matrices will, are supposed associated with their um, with matrices. So we calculated uh, key, excuse me, query uh, matrix, uh, but taking the current representation of the of the input sequence. So here our input sequence is cats eats food. Um, representation of that entire sequence time the weight matrix of uh, query matrix in the uh, layer L. Okay, and uh, just a reminder that each one of these words was represented with a d-dimensional vector initially, and then it passes through one uh, encoder or decoder block. And when we get the output of an encoder or decoder block, we get z uh, in that encoder decoder block L uh, minus one. So we start with the initial representation of the input. Uh, and in this case, the entire sequence will then be represented by uh, three d-dimensional vectors that we can put into a matrix. And that's going to be matrix of the size three times d. So we will have three rows for uh, our three words, cat eats food. 
And each one of these is going to be high dimensional. It's going to have D dimensions. All right. So if we are in the first encoder block, in our first encoder or decoder block, we are going to encounter our weight matrix for uh, query matrix Q. And we are going to multiply our representation. So if we are in the first encoder layer, representation first one will be Z0 times this uh, weight matrix. Um, the weight matrix itself is going to be of the size D times some other dimension, which is going to be smaller, D prime. And it's actually going to be D, D prime equals to uh, D divided by number of heads. Because remember, when we have multiple uh, self-attention mechanisms, uh, then we are going to uh, obtain the outputs of each one of them and concatenate them together to multiply it uh, with the you know uh, following uh, weight matrices that come from the feed forward uh, layers. All right, so the z z uh, from the previous layer is of the of the dimension the not d, uh, three times d. So our query matrix will be of the size three times d prime. And we are going to do this multiple times for our key uh, matrix as well, but it's going to have its own uh, uh, weight matrix VQL. And we are going to as well get the same size matrix and we're going to have value as well with its own weight matrix. It's going to be of the size three times D prime. Great, so remember that we had uh, this equation as our um, equation that gives us this kind of uh, matrix. So our A is going to be equals to softmax, of qu query times key transpose divided by some term here, d prime. And let's see what this what this is. So query here is has three rows corresponding to cat its food and it's uh, d dimensional. Let me just check whether I am sharing this screen. Hopefully I am. I have no way of determining that. All right, uh, let's hope for the best. All right, so this is our query matrix. And then the, uh, our uh, key matrix transpose will be of the size D prime uh, times three. And these columns here represent cat eats food. So we, when we make the product of these um, of these two matrices, what what is happening? First of all, we are going to have a matrix of size three by three, and you can think of um, each one of these uh, rows and columns corresponding to uh, words in the input, but just just a moment let's let's first see what would be the first value here it is the product of the representation of the word cat in the query matrix times representation of the word cat in the key uh, transpose matrix so it is dot product between representations of the word uh, cat so it kind of measures the some kind of similarity in this vector space between these two um, representations. All right, how about this, this value here? Now we are taking the representation of word cat in the query matrix, and we are multiplying it with the representation of word eats in the uh, key transpose matrix. 
So it's kind of like a similarity or some notion of importance between words cat and eat determined by these rep specific representations of the word cat and eat that are computed in query and key values in a specific layer uh, of the transformer at the, uh, architecture and given by a specific head in the multi-headed attention in that uh, layer, uh, and so on. I do want to emphasize another point um, here. Um, we had uh, we had importance between cat and eats. So what about eats, uh, eats and cat, eats and cat here? Is are the, these values going to be the same? Uh, well, they're not necessarily going to be the same because we are going to take the representation of word eats in from the query matrix uh, and multiply it by representation of the word cat coming from the key transpose. So representation of cat here in the query and in the key is not necessarily the same because they are obtained through different weight matrices. So when we do dot product between uh, eats and cat here, we are making a dot product between two completely different uh, representations. So this is not necessarily um, a symmetric uh, matrix and not necessarily what I mean is actually very rarely is gonna be symmetric. Okay, so I hope this um, point that the, that we are computing some kind of importances between words came across. And then there is a softmax uh, at the end. And what softmax does is, and then we all know by now, it is quashing our values between zero and one. So when we apply softmax, what we get here, for example, is importance between eats, and cat that is bounded by zero and one. So if we are having importance that's close to zero, we can say, well, the this the these two words uh, are not important to each other. And when we have a value that's closer to one, we can say they are they are um, important. The relationship between between them is important for the task. Now, uh, let's go over the one last uh, step here. Uh, now that we have our attention matrix here, we are going to do the final um, matrix multiplication, which will then be the output of that specific head in the multi-headed attention. We are going to take A and uh, multiply it with a uh, value matrix V. So, what, what is happening here exactly? So we have our three by three matrix, which corresponds to relationship between input word, cat eats food. Here as well, cat eats food. And then we have our matrix V, which is three uh, times D dimensional matrix, where D is uh, way larger than D. Okay, so when we multiply that, we are going to get um, three, three times the uh, matrix as well. Um, but let's see what are the, uh, uh, what are, how are we going to get, uh, let's say the first value in this matrix here. We are going to get it by taking the representation. We are going to take uh, get it by taking the, um, the first column of our matrix V and each one of these uh, word, uh, important scores here, uh, cat and cat, cat and eats, cat and food is going to be multiplied by the first um, dimension in each one of these, um, these um, columns. Excuse me, I didn't. I don't think I said something right here. So let me start. Let, let me try this again. For word cat, we are going to have um, importance of other words in the input for the word cat. 
And then we are going to use those importances to basically uh, weigh the first dimension of the representations of each one of these words. So here, what we get is basically a weighted combination of the first dimension of each uh, word in the input and so on for each one of these dimensions in the first row of the uh, of the final um, final uh, first row. This is going to be ZL. What I'm trying to uh, say here is that in the end, you are taking the representations of each uh, word in, in the input, it's a cat, it's and food, and you are making, uh, basically weighting each one of these uh, representations corresponding to how much those words were important for the word uh, cat that we have in our attention metrics. So in the end, this representation is what we use in our following feed forward layers. But each one of these representations for each one of these words is now a weighted, uh, weighted combination of all the words uh, in the input. So your word, the representation of your word cat in the layer L contains information about other words in the input. And we say that these representations are contextualized. This is important because when we are when we are interpreting these weight matrices like I did here, I said this number here tells us that word cats is this much important for the word eats. But the more precise way of describing this matrix would be to say a vector representation of the word cat that contains information about other words in the input is this much important for the representation of the word eats that uh, contains certain information about other words in the input. So if the representation of the word uh, eats has contained a lot of information about uh, the word foods here, then actually um, word, if this number was really high, then we should have said that the word cat or namely its representation is really important, not only for the word uh, eats, but also for the word food. So the, the, the precise interpretation of this becomes uh, very, very tricky. All right, let's now move on to uh, our, our um, attention matrices. Um, a little digression, but to compute this kind of heat maps, you can again use the uh, Captum library that you have used in your, uh, in your assignment. So it's a great uh, way to try some of these uh, things for yourself. And what I want to talk now about now is um, our metric faithfulness uh, around self-attention. There is this whole line of work on is attention explanation. It had been a, a debate that had emerged uh, in 2019 but with the paper, attention is not explanation. And with the rebuttal, attention is not not explanation. And then after that, uh, there is a whole, whole line of work around this. And you know when I told you that I want you to embrace that um, these kinds of local explanations cannot ever be proven to be 100% faithful or 100% not faithful, this is what I meant by it. Uh, you can get trapped into doing so much work to trying to prove uh, something that is incredibly, incredibly hard to formally guarantee. Uh, whereas kind of just accepting that um, there is some leeway here um, can actually move us way farther than uh, just trying to uh, altogether publish a ton of work on just trying to prove that this thing is faithful or not. Uh, with that said, I do want to show you a, a nice a nice way of seeing why attention in its standard form as it was presented uh, is not exactly representing the reasons why the model made prediction. 
And there is actually just a simple tweak you can do to it to get, uh, again, an, an matrix that you can then visualize with a heat map that represents way more precisely the reasons why the model made a prediction in terms of um, word to word, token to token relationships. So uh, these are equations for one self attention head. We have query, query key value, and then softmax that is measuring a relationship in, uh, or important scores between tokens and the input. And then our final representation coming out of one attention head is going to be a weighted uh, combination of input uh, words that is determined by uh, the attention scores. Um, if not clear by what, by what I just said, uh, we are doing this weighted combination of input representations for every single token in the input. So the resulting matrix is of the size, input length, time, whatever is dimension of our vectors. And Brunner and Atal presented this really neat way of seeing uh, the problems with uh, saying that these uh, attention scores we have here, whatever is the you know the token to token score that that's the reason why the model had made a certain uh, prediction. And they start with uh, examining the rank of the matrix V. They say, okay, the rank is. Um, you know, if you look at the uh, dimensions of these two matrices, then you can say, well, it's smaller than um, whatever is the uh, number of rows, number of columns of each uh, one of these. So uh, we can say that the rank of matrix V is uh, smaller than um, number of tokens in the input or the, uh, the size, the number of columns of the value matrix. And then they look into what happens if your input sequence length is larger than the number of columns in the uh, weight, the, the value matrix, namely its uh, weight matrix. And just for, you know, to ground this in some real numbers, uh, the input sequence length, the maximum input sequence length in BERT is 512, and the number of columns in the uh, weight matrix for the value matrix is 64. So this happens easily. Because the um, value matrix uh, is determined by, uh, the rank of the value matrix is determined by its number of rows and number of columns, a number of rows equals ds, a number of columns equals uh, dv, we know that its null space uh, is not trivial, namely it's, it's non-empty because um, th these two things should be the same. So there exist some uh, vectors in the of the size of our input sequence length ds that when multiplied with the value matrix v gives, uh, gives zero. And we can exploit this to, to, the, to construct another attention matrix and to construct this another attention matrix A plus A tilde, A is our standard attention matrix. Um, a til we need to also define A tilde. And A tilde is gonna be um, a matrix uh, defined with uh, vectors that are in the null space of the value matrix. So you take, ds, ds dimensional vectors xi that are all in the null space of our value matrix V. And so you constructed such matrix A tilde that you're going to sum or add to the our normal attention matrix. If you do that, and then uh, you just, you know, um, do standard matrix operation, you break this into two components, uh, A times V and A tilde times V, then because A tilde is composed from the vectors in the null space, we know that this product is equal to the uh, zero, zero, whatever matrix, uh, which means that our normal attention, A multiplied with V, which gives us then the representation of our input that is then passed to the feed forward layers where further computations, including the classification uh, happen, that is equal to A plus A tilde times V, which means that um, I can show you this matrix 
and say, well, this is the reason why the model had made the prediction. And I will get the exact same results as if I had if I use A times B, because this is gonna cancel out, right? But this is deceiving, right? I can do with this whatever I want. For example, I can use it for some malicious intent because maybe A plus A tilde is going to give me a nicer picture about our model. So what can we do uh, about this? Well, we can define a new attention by breaking up our standard attention into two components, uh, one in the row space and in one in the null space, because we know from linear algebra that we can do that. Um, and then what we are left with, because again, whatever is in the null space or uh, you know perpendicular to the row space is gonna be canceled out. So we are left only with the component uh, that's orthogonal to the null space. And we can use this one to illustrate the what survives in the further computations, including the classification layers. So whatever is here actually affects subsequent layers. What is in this component here can is canceled out and is never processed by the next. Uh, layer in our encoder or decoder blocks. So this illustration of this is what actually is um, is happening uh, in this. Uh, I mean, what is um, affecting the classification layer? All right, you might be wondering. Okay, this I remember this from linear algebra. I can I know I can uh, decompose um, any you know vector matrix into these two components. Uh, because they make the, the vector space, but how exactly do I do that? How do I implement that? To implement that, you will need to uh, compute the singular value, the composition of your uh, value matrix, and then the, um, the, the columns in your matrix U is going to span the null space of B. So you are you, you need to project your matrix A in, onto those um, into this uh, null space, which means that you are going to um, consider this to be the basis of your uh, null space. And then you are going to do the projection of each one of the rows of your attention matrix onto that space, which is, uh, I hopefully remember that given by this equation. And then when you have each one of these rows of your attention matrix projected, onto uh, the null space, uh, you are going to recombine them uh, uh, back. Now, this is the, uh, I said recombine them back. What I actually want to say is you are going to combine them together by putting them, all these vectors into a single matrix. That's going to be a projection of this matrix onto the null space, but we don't want that. We want uh, a vector that's orthogonal to that. So we are going to take our standard attention matrix and uh, subtract the um, component in the null space, the projection onto the null space, because remember, component orthogonal to that one plus the one that's projected onto the null space together make A. So basically what you did here is uh, put this component on the other side. And this is how you get your uh, effective uh, attention. And here I want to finish by showing you what happens when you plot the standard attention and when you plot the um, effective attention. So here at the uh, upper parts uh, of this figure in green, we have um, attention weights for certain um, words in the input, such as nouns, pronouns, verbs. Uh, separ separator uh, token that we know from bird, CLS token that we know from bird, and punctuation signs uh, in each one of the layer of bird model from zero to eleven. And when you aggregate uh, the important scores, um, you will see here, for example, that punctuation has surprisingly 
high importance scores, as well as separator token, right? And that's kind of weird. And remember, we have seen that in one of the examples with gradient based attribution as well. And you might wonder why is why is punctuation so so important? I mean, we know it should be important, but it seems it's even more important than nouns or, or pronouns, which have uh, way more uh, information about the input. And then if we are if we plot our effective attention, we can see that those effects completely uh, disappear. So uh, these these uh, representations of punctuation and separator tokens actually live in this new space of the value matrix. And this picture then gives us way more reasonable understanding of our model. And also if you, for one example, if you plot standard and um, effective attention, with standard attention, you see something that's pretty sparse, right? It seems like only on this diagonal, there are important things, only the separator tokens seem to be important for uh, all of the other words in the input. And if you uh, plot the effective attention, sure, things on, the, on this diagonal are still important. And that's because local context in language carries a lot of uh, information and you know what if the surrounding words for the uh, for the current words are simply going to naturally be important but now also we see that some other words here have a uh, higher uh, importance which seems way more uh, reasonable especially because we know that the uh, gist of the usefulness of transformers is that it can model this uh, long range dependencies which if we uh, look at this standard attention here it might see like it's never actually happening but then if we look at effective attention visualization here we can see that indeed some um long range dependencies are captured with self attention and um bruno retal had represented their argument for this and defined effective attention but um concurrently kobayashi et al have also found a different way to examine this and basically what they have uh put forward is that we all focus on the actual scores we get in the attention matrices, but the norm of the value vector is also going to affect what ends up in the final representation of the input. So here you can see that uh, for um, uh, punctuation and separator tokens, um, we we have very, um, uh, very, Excuse me, for the separator token here, we have very high uh, in important scores in the attention matrices, as well as here for the for the punctuation. But then if we look at the 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 norm of the value vector for those uh, tokens, separator tokens and punctuation uh, tokens, we can see that they are pretty pretty low. And what this paper is saying is that actual product between the weights and the norm of the vector for those uh, tokens is going to determine what uh, ends up in the representation. And here we have high value multiplied with the low value is going to give us low value. Therefore, these things are not truly important. So we need to look at the both, not just attention scores in isolation. Um, yeah, I hope this helps you interpret the attention weight matrices. Remember that we are not actually saying this word is important this much to other words. We are saying that they're contextualized representation that contain information about other tokens in the inputs are this much uh, uh, important. Uh, we have also learned that uh, we need to do some tweaks of the uh, attention matrix to really uh, say that it is the importance of these representations because some of these things will cancel out when, when we are multiplying them with the value uh, matrix. And here is another way of saying that, which um, tells us that we should be looking not only in the attention scores, but also on the norm of the value uh, vectors and that we should be looking at the product of these things to determine what is truly important. So you need to do way more than just look at that, uh, for example, uh, this heat map here. It is way more 
complicated than just looking at this and saying, yeah, um, nothing here is important. All right, and um, beyond self-attention, I recommend you to look at these two papers. Uh, this one proposes a whole different way of measuring pairwise feature importances. And this paper here is one paper that represents a family of model called hierarchical explanations. When you build these importances, given the importance of individual words, you're trying to get importances of phrases, for example. So this is uh, these are different methods to uh, that gives you pairwise feature importance, and in computer vision you might be interested in this. Um, it's more it's uh, related to the attention based pairwise uh, feature importances, but uh, here instead of tokens we have patches, right? So we are talking about the importance between us uh, one patch of the image with respect to the other patch of the image. There, here they are already using the word concept to refer to this like uh, pairwise patch importance. And that's potentially questionable. Are our concepts something higher than that? Maybe they're not, maybe that's acceptable. It's something we can uh, discuss uh, when we talk about concept-based um, explanations in our discussion session.